Hello everyone, I am Jennifer Ferguson with Artistic Painting Studio and welcome to Home Talk. So today I have a fun project that we are going to do. We're going to have a blast, okay? We're going to take this round, okay? It's just a round piece of wood that you can get at Home Depot just as it is. It's like under seven bucks and we're going to turn it into a swing. Hopefully one durable enough for me even to get on. So we're going to get started on this and have a great time. Thanks for joining me. So we're going to get started on this fun project. Like I said, you can find the round at Home Depot. It's 17 and a half inches diameter. And all I did is drill a hole in the middle, or we think it's close to the middle, okay? And I judged the size of the hole based on the rope I'd already purchased, okay? So I wanted to make sure that my rope would go through, but be really tight, okay? Um, and now we're going to start our prep, okay? So I've sanded it where we drilled the hole, sanded it down any rough edges, and I'm just going to take Bondego Black, and this is my paint and primer all in one, and we're going to put a base coat on here. Um, this project is going to incorporate some wonderful foils, okay? So we're going to have a lot of fun with this. I have a little bit of a animal, um, <laughs> a little bit of an animal theme in mind for this project, okay? So I'm going to paint this whole thing black. Um, I am putting on my paint um, in the direction of the grain of the wood so that I don't create any additional um, like brush strokes or movement in my base coat. I like to try to put things on as smooth as possible, but I'm going to put on a full coat of our black uh, Bondego. Like I said, this is a paint and primer all in one and we'll allow this to dry and if need be, we'll put on a second coat because sometimes when you're going on to raw wood, you will raise the grain. So once we have this full coat on, um, I'm sure that there's going to be a little bit of the grain being raised because it's just raw pine wood. We'll have to do a light sanding and put on a second coat. So I'm going to finish this out and um, you'll see me back in a few minutes when we're ready to go. Okay, a couple of things. I've raised the round up on what are called painter's triangles and you can just find these I think on Amazon or anywhere online, but they help your projects stay up. So you can see, oops, I moved one up and off the ground so that when you're painting them, they don't get stuck to anything that you're working on. Um, I also used um, some 400 grit sandpaper, gave this a real light sand and a second coat so it's nice and smooth. And now we're going to go to our next layer, which is going to be our foil adhesive. And this is our Artsyville Embellishments foil adhesive that is perfect for almost every hard surface. Um, the product looks milky white. And anytime I'm brushing it on, I add a little bit of water. So this is just a fine mist spray bottle, okay? Just sprayed it right on top of there. And then I'm gonna mix it in, okay? So it thins it down so it just brushes easier. If I'm rolling it on, and I probably could roll it on for this project since it's so big, um, I probably wouldn't water it down, but anytime I'm brushing it on, I do because I still wanna even add a little bit more, okay? So just add your water up to probably about two, 3% maybe until it just brushes on nice and smooth. Um, it's gonna go on looking milky white and it will dry perfectly clear. You wanna make sure you have 100% coverage because if you miss a spot, there won't be any adhesive and we won't be able to transfer our foil there, okay? So make sure you have 100% coverage um, you also want to smooth out your brush strokes the best you can, and that's why I'm using a nice art brush. Okay, this is an art wash brush, which um, will lay the product down smoother than a lot of other brushes, okay? Um, again, I still feel it's kind of tacky or sticky. It's really a thick product, okay? I'm just adding a little bit more water. Um, but once we have this on, 
like I said, when it dries, it will go clear. You want to let it sit for at least an hour. And like I said, try to smooth out your brush strokes because it's not a self leveling product. So um, whatever brush stroke you leave behind, you might see through the foil application. So I'm going to do the entire top as well as this outside edge here because we are going to be foiling all of it. We're going to grab even a stencil and have some fun with some animal prints. So I'm going to finish this up, let it dry for an hour, and we'll be back to continue this project. Okay, our foil adhesive is completely dry and ready for our next application. And I have found this fun stencil that is called Just Diamonds. And because we got a wood grain here, I'm going to kind of keep everything going with the grain of this wood. And I'm going to try to just center my stencil in the middle of this round, okay? And when I was doing this, I discovered that um, the hole didn't get cut exactly in the center, but we're going to go for laying out the uh, pattern as much as we can. So I'm working with a couple of different foils. The first one we're going to use is called Jaguar Gold, um, and this is just a really fun foil to play with. I cut a piece off, and I made sure to cut it smaller than the stencil. Oops, it's grabbing it already, okay? Uh, because what I want it to do is just cover the stencil openings, okay? We don't want it to go outside of the stencil because the entire surface is sticky from our adhesive. Okay, now there's a couple of different size brushes we can use. This is our, what I call the big guns, okay? This is our big scrubber brush. All the bristles are just plastic bristles, but it's a real stiff bristle. Um, this one's a little bit smaller. It's more of our nail size brush. And then occasionally we go down to a toothbrush. We try to find stiff ones if possible. And then we might even have to pull in the embossing tool if we need to define the edges, okay? So I'm just gonna go for the biggest one here. And as I scrub over it, you should see the diamond shapes come into life, okay? So the only place the foil is going to adhere is through the stencil pattern. So once we're done transferring all of the diamonds, then we will transfer our koi cheetah, which is going to be a silver pattern, okay, that is going to fill in the background. So this is a really fun way to use your foils and stencils together. Okay, and I am just scrubbing pretty hard. And one of the reasons why I want to tell you I'm scrubbing hard is because I want to get the best transfer I can because we're looking for close to 100% with this because if by chance I don't have full coverage in this uh, diamond shape when I lay the cheetah pattern or the koi cheetah over the top, that might transfer anything that's still left behind, okay? So that's why I'm gonna be scrubbing a little extra hard and try to make sure that we have complete coverage. Okay, so we are going to peek. I'm gonna pull up the foil and as I'm doing that, I'm hoping that you can see that it's almost clear. There's a little bit of the, looks like the pattern still on the foil, but it's pretty darn clear, okay? Because you can see how like the circle, okay, where there was no wood there because of the cutout. Um, but this is pretty good transfer. If you feel like you need to go back and scrub or anything, lay it right back down before you completely take it off. And hopefully, if there was anything left on there, it's gonna still be going right over the adhesive that is on the surface and um, attached to um, the actual surface. Okay, so I am gonna scrub those all a little bit harder and see if I can clear out that foil just a little bit more. Let's see how this back row is. Okay, sometimes it's best to, okay, my triangles are moving here. Um, Sometimes it's best to lay it back down this direction and then peek from here. That way, if you want to lay it back, uh, you can without feeling like you're not going to be able to reposition the foil right where it was. Okay, this is going to look awesome. Look how fun that is. And then even look at our foil that I pulled off. 
look how fun that is. You could go transfer that over somewhere else and have a negative space um, where there would be no diamond, okay? Um, so now we're going to lift carefully, okay? Because remember, our whole surface is sticky here. So our stencil is staying really, really well, okay? Especially because I scrubbed over it. So I'm gonna be careful as I pull it up because I don't want to ruin our adhesive. And then we're gonna keep repositioning it until we have this whole surface done. Um, so I'm gonna line up the diamonds that I've already done and move over and then I'll reposition for this section. So every time I move that stencil, I am going to cut another piece of foil.
do that well. I might just move this back a little bit further towards me. Um, hopefully you can see that edge really good as we're finishing this out. Woohoo! I'm telling you, this piece is going to be the talk of a town uh, as we get this hung up and create a swing to play on. Now this is the largest one I've ever made. Um, I have had just a friend in the past that used to do a lot of our woodworking um, cut me the swings or the rounds. And I used to make them a lot smaller for kids, uh, but we decided to do this where if you, know, if you don't have somebody that can help you cut wood, um, you can just go buy this directly from Home Depot and make one just a little bit larger so that anybody can use it. Because I don't care how old you get, swinging on a swing is still a fun thing. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm having too much fun. I know it, guys. So as I'm finishing this out, uh, the last thing that I'll need to do is because this is going to be an outside project, um, is we are going to cover this with an exterior varnish that has UV protection. So make sure that you put on several coats and give it really good protection. The other option would be if you decided you wanted to pour um, a layer of epoxy over the top of it, you could do that as well, which would give it fabulous protection. Let's see, did we make it all the way around yet? Oh, short, one piece, okay. I thought I'd cut enough. One more little strip here. Okay, and as I'm going around, I didn't try to match up the pattern, okay? This is one of those things you just don't worry about it. Even where it's crinkling here, I don't worry about it. We're still gonna get a really cool Jaguar print on that. Okay, so my finishing touches are gonna be putting on our top coat. Like I said, I'm gonna get an exterior varnish with UV protection. I'm gonna put on probably about three or four coats. And we are going to go take this to its location, hang it up, and we'll see you out in the park. Okay, so our swing has been completely varnished. Like I said, I put on quite a few coats. It's an exterior varnish, and I have a three quarter inch rope. I'm gonna go ahead and tape the end of it as tight as I can, so I can pull this through the hole. And we've got a nice long piece of rope here, okay? This is <laughs> probably looking absolutely crazy. But I've tied a big knot on the end. We're probably gonna tie another double knot down here. And like I said, we're gonna go hang this up in the park and we'll see you out there. Mm -hmm. 